A dangerous mix of sleet, snow, and torrential rain across our area, depending on where you live. Ice and soaking rain are a concern for your morning commute. Avery County schools are closed tomorrow because of the wintry weather. Ash, Burke, Caldwell, and Watauga County schools are on a two-hour delay. We've got team coverage tonight. WCCB Charlotte's Courtney Francisco is live in Lenore, tracking icy road conditions. But we start tonight with Greg and a first look at the forecast. Yeah, I'll tell you what, if you love snow and you're in the high country right now, what a great evening you've had. An inch or two of snow. It's just been a winter wonderland up there. I've enjoyed the pictures, people emailing me, also checking out the webcams. It's been a lot of fun. And in Charlotte, if you're like me this morning, I woke up and saw some sleet out there mixed in with the rain. It was a tease, unfortunately, for us. In Charlotte, this is just going to be a cold rain. But we do have winter storm warnings right now up into the high country. Notice along I-40, we have winter weather advisories there. That's more precautionary than anything. I think this is really going to be confined to the foothills in the high country. That's where we're seeing it right now. Wait till you see these live shots here coming up in about a minute or so. It looks just beautiful up there. Great news for the ski resorts, at least right now. Area temperatures, the reason they have the snow, well, it's the coldest. Upper 20s there for everybody else. This is key. It's cold. It's been a miserable evening. It's been cold and damp, but notice we're all above freezing. And we're going to remain that way, it looks like, through the overnight period. The closest uh, to near 32 degrees will be right along I-40 or areas to the north. For Charlotte, we're still dealing with some rain here. But we zoom into the high country right now. Ashwatauga, Avery counties, still clinging to some snow. But notice the warmer air on the back side of the mountains gradually moving in this direction. So that will eventually change over what we're dealing with snow now to a sleet wintry mix. Eventually just freezing rain during the overnight period. We will all go above freezing tomorrow, which is good news. We'll start to melt some of that. We have more rain chances. I'll let you know when there's a break coming up. Oh, okay, sounds good. Thank you, Greg. WCCB Charlotte's Courtney Francisco is live in Lenore tonight. There's some snow in the mountains, but ice is a major concern overnight. Courtney? That should be the biggest concern on the roads for tomorrow morning, Morgan. Now, we've been as high as Boone, Blowing Rock, down here to Lenore now. And in the past 20 minutes, it's let up. But we've seen it all sorts of precipitation tonight from big fluffy flakes to sleet. And right now, we got a light freezing rain. Sleet refreezing on roads is the biggest concern overnight. We definitely don't want to travel on ice. Tiffany Sheaf and her daughter preparing to get home before roads worsen. Watauga County Schools let out after lunch Tuesday because of the incoming storm. A lot of us up here, we like to ski and snowboard, so it's a little less exciting than snow, but ice is still, it still means to get out of school sometimes, so that's good. Students left App State early. The university canceled classes by 5 o'clock. We're pretty used to this. Businesses, salted parking lots, and sidewalks Tuesday evening. County workers on standby to plow roads if ice starts sticking. From a town perspective, I think Boone handles it really well. Power companies are bracing for outages if ice weighs down electric lines. If anything happens, my son and my husband and I will be all together. We've got peanut butter and we've got bread and we'll cook a lot beforehand. People are prepared to stay put. Snow isn't that bad, but ice you don't want to mess around with. You don't want to mess around with ice, and we haven't seen a lot of plows out on the roads yet, but the hope is that temperatures will go up and melt this before rush hour tomorrow morning. Morgan. Courtney Francisco reporting live in Lenore tonight. Courtney, thank you. Be safe on your drive back to Charlotte. Remember, you can track any wintry weather in your neighborhood with our high-def radar. Look for that on the weather page at WCCBCharlotte.com. You can also stay connected to the weather with our free WCCB Charlotte app. Who knew what and when? Tomorrow, Mark Harris takes the stand in day three of a high-profile public hearing. Investigators are trying to get to the bottom of ballot tampering allegations in the District 9 race. WCCB News at 10 anchor Drew Balea is live tonight again in Raleigh. Drew? Yeah, today, Morgan, Andy Yates was on the stand for more than three hours, and he's also going to be taking questions tomorrow. He's the head of Red Dome Group, which pretty much served as the financial organization for the Harris campaign. He spent much of today trying to distance himself from McCray Dallas and his operations. McCray Dallas is a man that Yates said he had spoken to almost daily during the campaign. I was shocked and disturbed to learn that that appears that it was not the case. Andy Yates of political consulting firm Red Dome says McCray Dallas lied to him. Yates says Dallas was hired by the Harris campaign before he joined and that he understood his operations to be legal. I care deeply about the integrity of our democracy and I'm not going to put up with that junk and that 
frankly, crap. State investigators say Dallas paid people to collect completed absentee ballots and bring them to his office. Yates testified today that he would have resigned from the Harris campaign if he knew of illegal actions. But it's been documented that Mark Harris expressed suspicion about absentee ballots in Bladen County after losing to Robert Pittenger in the 2016 primary. Dallas took the fifth when asked to testify about his role in the 2016 governor's race, which also had allegations of ballot harvesting. The head of the state Republican Party was involved in that election challenge, which was dismissed. It was my belief that everything was legal. Lawyers for Dan McCready say today's testimony draws Harris closer to Dallas. That election fraud now has directly linked up with the candidate. The, uh, Mark Harris hired Dallas. He communicated with Dallas over what the scope of the program was, and he um, uh, was in regular contact with Dallas. While attorneys for Harris say the candidate was led on by a liar. What we've learned today is that both Andy Yates and Dr. Harris were told by McRae Dallas that everything he was doing was legal. Dallas declined to testify on Monday. When asked if the Harris campaign should be responsible for Dallas's activities, Harris's attorney said... So I would say absolutely not. Now, today, we also heard from several poll workers in Bladen County who say that they were trained and told to print out early voting results before the November general election. That is a clear violation of state rules. Morgan? Okay, so, Drew, everything that's come out so far, the big question is whether the attorneys are feeling like a new election should be called at this point. Right, and obviously they have two very, very different views on the matter. The uh, attorney for Dan McCready says that there's clear evidence that shows uh, that there was a lot of doubt around this election process. Meanwhile, Harris's attorney says that no votes were changed. Rather, testimony today shows that no votes were changed or thrown out, and therefore the results from back in November should be honored. In order for there to be a new election called, four out of the five board members on the State Board of Elections must order that to happen. Morgan. Drew Belay reporting live in Raleigh tonight again. Drew, thank you. Stay with WCCB Charlotte for continuing coverage. Drew is going to be there tomorrow for day three of the hearing. You can follow Drew and WCCB Charlotte on Twitter for updates throughout the day. Then look for complete coverage tomorrow night at 10. Tonight, surveillance photos show a man police want to talk to about an attempted kidnapping in South Charlotte. A woman told police a man attacked her with a knife around 7.30 Sunday night at the South Boulevard I-485 bus stop. She used a stun gun on the guy, and she got away. If you recognize the man in that photo, call 911. Tonight, a teenager faces charges accused of bringing a loaded gun to South Mecklenburg High School. It's the first gun found on a CMS campus since the district started security screenings last month. The South Mech principal sent parents a message saying the student had a gun and that it was turned over to the school resource officer. No one got hurt and the principal says no threats were made. South Mech had its first security sweep on February 1st. Tonight, domestic violence is blamed for a crash and a shooting near a police station in East Charlotte. A woman told police her ex-boyfriend slammed into her SUV this morning on North Sharon Amity Road as she drove to the police station with her kids to get help. Police say Kendrick Piggy fired shots at the SUV and then sped off. Officers arrested him after he flipped his car nearby. The mother and her kids are okay. Outcry over increased ice activity in Charlotte, leading to action from Mecklenburg County commissioners. Tonight, they came to the defense of Sheriff Gary McFadden. WCCV Charlotte's Marvin Beach is live in Uptown Charlotte tonight with new information. Marvin? Morgan, uh, ICE has said Sheriff Gary McFadden is partially to blame for the increase in ICE raids across Charlotte. That's because he ended the 287G program here in Mecklenburg County, forcing ICE agents to go out and make their arrests on the streets instead of in the jail. No doubt where county commissioners stand, all nine voting in favor of a resolution supporting immigrants and the sheriff. I celebrate the steps that you have taken. The approach that you have employed. Newly elected Sheriff Gary McFadden not backing down despite criticism from Immigrations and Custom Enforcement. 
ICE leaders argue by ending 287G, McFadden is allowing dangerous criminals back into the community. McFadden says immigration enforcement isn't his job. By targeting immigration community with raids, threats, deportation, and we as law enforcement know that makes us and them lose trust in each other. He says ICE raids like we've seen over the past few weeks make victims and witnesses afraid to come forward, causing crimes to go unreported. Commissioners agree. I condemn the comments of ICE officers who have publicly criticized our elected sheriff. That is not their job. I, I thank you, uh, and, and I'm just so proud of you and uh, for, for, for standing up to the pressures that must be incredible on you. ICE agents will also have a harder time getting inside the Mecklenburg County Courthouse now. The sheriff says they must now get permission to do that, and that change comes after ICE made some arrests in the courthouse last month. Morgan? Marvin Beach reporting live in Uptown Charlotte tonight. Marvin, thank you. Trapped underground, a contractor pinned down in a concrete shaft in Ballantyne. What it took for crews to get him to safety. Plus... To be honest, I knew that it wasn't going to be good. A Charlotte security guard story of survival. How she's recovering after being robbed, shot, and left for dead. And wintry weather in the mountains and pouring rain in Charlotte. How long will the nasty weather stick around? Greg's updated forecast is next. And tonight on The Edge, survey says, tonight we know exactly how much money is enough money to change your life. We'll find out if you agree. And tell me, what amount of money would you consider life-changing? Tweet me at Morgan Fogarty and don't miss The Edge at 1030.